Canada takes away a 2-0 victory away in Curaçao, securing the three points, which sends us to the top of our Nations League group, ahead of Honduras, and of course, ahead of that all-important match at BMO against Honduras in a couple of days. But it was a very professional performance by Canada against Curaçao last night, which saw a 2-0 victory and goals coming from, of course, Jonathan David in the 22nd minute, and a goal in the 43rd minute by the Canamati all-time goal scorer and the Real Valladolid star in Kyle Larine. It was a very professional performance from Canada last night. It was a very dull and boring game to watch, but ultimately, all that really matters is Canada got the job done. Taking away a 2-0 victory away in CONCACAF is never an easy task, but they managed to do it and it was just great to see us get back on the pitch get the victory in the bag and head home to BMO where we'll be playing ultimately on a pitch we don't lose at which is all we need not to lose against Honduras but ultimately for me it's a must win game I know we can tie and still go through and advance on goal differential but you got to be beating teams like Honduras at home. you got to be proving yourself. And that is what I think Canada will do at BMO. We're going to talk about that in a different preview. This is, of course, the reaction to that Curacao game. And it was a very interesting game, guys. There's not a lot of huge taking points from this, but I got a few. Of course, it was a very boring, a dull match to sit through and watch. But ultimately, we got the three points. It was a professional match from Canada, getting the job done, cruising to victory very simply done by Canada. But of course, for me, there's a couple of things to pinpoint and take out of this. Of course, we saw Canada go with a 3-5-2. We have gone with a 3-5-2 or a 3 in the back system at quite a few times with John Herdman, but never with a three-man midfield, very rarely. And I find it very interesting. A lot of Canadians have been calling out for a three-man midfield. A lot of Canadians have wanted it, especially after that World Cup debacle where we lost everything in the midfield. That's where a game is won and lost in the midfield. And we truly lost it in the midfield at the World Cup. And against bigger sides, we will always lose it if we're playing a two-man midfield. I do believe that. But for me, even though we played a three-man midfield... There was still no flow to the game. There was still no creativity coming through the midfield. There was still really no press or no consistent press. Yes, we did press at times, but it just wasn't consistent like we're used to with a John Herdman side. Still, this is a very good midfield. I know a three-man midfield, I absolutely love it. I love the idea of it, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes forward because I don't believe we have a true number 10 right now. And I don't believe Ozo is a note note number 10. And I think you need someone at an out note number 10 if you're going to have someone sitting behind the two strikers, especially especially elite forwards in Kyle Larin and Jonathan David. I don't think we have that right now. So I think you have to play a more balanced midfield if you're going to do so. And I truly believe Canada needs a revert to a 4-3-3. And I think we have more creativity on the wings than with Alfonso Davies, Sam Adekubi overlapping, Tejon Buchanan on the right. Of course, he did have that knock. So that could be why we didn't start him. And Alistair Johnson overlapping or Larea over there. I think a 4-3-3 gets the best out of Canada and the midfield as well. You have one of our midfielders sitting at the six we have two midfielders three who can play at a six and do it at a very good level and you have a lot of box-to-box -box midfielders in the Canadian player pool we don't have a true out and out number 10 and that is why I believe a 3-5-2 of an attacking midfielder in Ozo just isn't gonna work for me but I thought it was a great way to finally see the three-man midfield. Of course, we're going to see it more often, so I'm not going to jump on it immediately and completely debacle it and completely thrash it. But it's going to be very exciting to see what Herman goes with in the next game, having, of course, Vittoria and the likes of... Uh, multiple center backs being out and Kamal Miller two of his first choices and second choice but we are getting Alistair Johnson back so it'll be very interesting to see does he revert to that 4-3-3 that I'm excited about I am not sure but some great thing to take about here is Derek Cornelius was phenomenal I know you can say he didn't have much to deal with but when he was on the ball he was fantastic when he was running down the channels he looked very good he was very composed when he did have a duel to make he won it he was unbelievable I truly thought I'm I think he's our best center back in the pool. Him and Steven Vittoria are unbelievable. Just go look where Derek Cornelius is playing. He made a huge transfer to Malmo, wanted to prove himself. He's been playing absolutely brilliant for Malmo in the Swedish first division. He's been phenomenal, and he brings it, gets his first chance, his true chance with the Kahneman tee, and it completely takes it. He looked phenomenal last night, and I'm very excited to see what he can do against Honduras, because I really want to see him starting alongside Scott Kennedy, or alongside Alistair Johnson with Richie Larea at right back. I think it's going to be very exciting to see, but it's amazing to see that Canada has a true top center back now in Derek Cornelius, who I think is going to jump leaps and bounds in the next couple of years but guys also Scott Kennedy looked very good as well 
Those are two huge performances I had to take away from this. We changed a bit of a new formation. We threw in some new center backs, played a bunch of players who haven't really fully played together in the system. And Scott Kennedy, a player who has been out with injury for some time as well. Of course, missed the World Cup due to injury. Hasn't really been playing for his club side in Johan Regensburg in the German second division. But got a chance with Canada last night. Of course, you could still see that face mask on him. Affected him a little bit when the ball did hit his face. But... He still played very well going down the channels. I like what he brings on the ball. He's very composed. I know you can talk about how he's not overly pacey, but I think think Scott Kennedy is still very good in the channels. I think he's still very quick. He's good on the turn. He's very smart defensively. I think he's very underrated. So it's going to be very interesting to see what John Herdman decides to do with Scott Kennedy going forward because Scott Kennedy needs to start getting more first team football at the club level as well. But before I wrap up this video, guys, I have to talk about one point. It's the midfield. It's not what we started with. I love what we started with. It was the substitutions. Atiba and Mark Anthony K. This is a huge talking point for a lot of Canadian fans. I tweeted about it. How does Victor Latore get left on the bench when you have a 40-year-old Natiba Hutchinson and Mark Anthony K, who has been absolutely piss poor for Toronto FC this season? Yes, he's come in with a couple of goals and assists. But besides that, his play has been poor. Ever since his injury, he's been very poor. I love the players. I love our Canadian players. But I don't understand how we aren't giving Victor Latore a match here. This is the most mind-boggling thing I took from last night's game. It, it absolutely makes no sense to me. You have a dual national in Victor Latore who you could say you could even question if he wasn't even called up from his other nation. But he was called up by South Sudan. If he really wanted to, he could say, F you guys and go play for South Sudan and easily get tap tied. But no, he came and played for Canada, but... He doesn't even get on the pitch. You, you could have said it's not the right situation. We're chasing the game. We're, we're down a man. We're trying to hold on to a lead. We want to get a goal. No situation like that. We were absolutely cruising. It was the most professional performance I've seen in my life from Canada in such a long time. We're up 2-0 in the second half. We're up a man. They're down a red card. And, and you're bringing on Victor, or you're bringing on Atiba Hutchinson and Mark Anthony K over Victor Latore, a young number six who we desperately need, a position that is a position of need for Canada, and you leave him on the bench for a poor out of form Mark Anthony K and a 40 year old Atiba Hutchinson. Uh, it, it makes absolutely no sense to me, and I don't understand why Victor Latore was left on the bench. A dual national, perfect game situation to put him into. I'm, I, I think Atiba Hutchinson slowly has to be transitioned out of the side. I think this was still a great game to bring him into, don't get me wrong. But I think Victor Latore should have been the first midfielder off the bench in any sort of situation. This game was the perfect game to bring him on, and I don't know why we didn't. Even if you wanted to bring on Atiba Hutchinson, fair play. It's still a good game to bring Atiba Hutchinson on. It's a very slow-paced game. He can knock the ball around. It's a very... It's a very professional performance and that, for Canada, and that is why you probably bring a Tiba Hutchinson on. And fair play. I wouldn't bring him on anywhere near against Honduras unless we're trying to hold on to a lead. But a Tiba Hutchinson coming on against Curacao, fine. I'm not going to argue that. But why don't you bring on Victor Latore alongside him? It just makes the system even more perfect. Yes, you can bring on a Tiba Hutchinson and bring on Victor Latore beside him. Do you want him to learn from a more... Um, how how does he get uh, the knowledge of playing with a top Canadian professional in a Tiba Hutchinson? You... you Put him on the pitch with him in a very perfect scenario in the match. You're up 2-0, you're cruising, they're down a man on the red card, you bring on a Tiba with Victor Latore. I can't think of a more perfect situation for Victor Latore to come seamlessly into this Canadian side. You substitute him in by the best player in Canadian footballing history, alongside just a true legend, and in a game where we're completely flowing... Victor Latore couldn't have had a better situation to come on and get cap tied and get into a Canadian side. It makes no sense why he didn't come on for me, and I don't know why Mark Anthony K is still in the squad. I would have put Jacob Schaffelberg in it over him, and it's just a very interesting situation. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say on that midfielder topic. You guys can obviously see I have a very uh, strong take on the Victor Latore situation, Mark Anthony K and Atiba Hutchinson. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Do you guys think Victor Latore should have been brought on? Do you guys think the substitution should have been different? What do you guys think about the formation? Cornelius, Scott Kennedy, let me know what you guys think down below. I'll be very interested to see what you guys have to say down below in the comments on your guys' match reactions as well. Drop a like down below, hit that sub button, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.